the acclaimed first season was no illusion. It was the real deal, Marvel god of mischief style. So traveling across time and space, including, by the way, surprise, surprise, McDonald's in Oklahoma in 1982, the six episode second season proved nothing is what it seemed, and along with the TVA's Mobius, played by Owen Wilson, the timeline must be Sylvie, played by Sophia Martino, revealed a side of the Tom Hiddleston portrayed Loki that we had not seen before in the MCU. Cheer it up! Sophia. Sophia DiMartino. Owen Wilson. Don Christian. Good afternoon, everybody. So we are here with Glorious Purpose. We are also obviously going to make this a fashion panel because, I mean, come on, this is a pretty great dress uh, panel here. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at a clip from season two of Loki. We're all going to go get neck massages after that. Um, I was thinking about something the other day, Tom. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have played Loki now for 12 years. 15. 15, sorry. I had an extra three. <laughs> And, and 12 episodes of television. How many movies? Uh, six. And you've died how many times? <laughs> officially, well, officially two. Officially two, but they weren't, uh, well, they felt like real endings, but it turns out they weren't. Um, Dark World, Thor the Dark World, um, uh, when Loki joins the fray to save Thor, um, and then we reworked it, and uh, he was sitting on the throne at the end. And then Avengers Infinity War was uh, the second one. Yes. Yeah. Maybe not the last one. <laughs> <laughs> well, only on that timeline. Yeah. Um, I, what was, what's been so thrilling is that I think the reason I've, I've absolutely loved playing Loki, I've, I, and it has been 15 years, it's been the most magnificent and emotional roller coaster full of twists and turns. And he has so much range and so much complexity, and it never feels like the same thing. But I know that the reason I'm standing here uh, or sitting here in front of you today is, is that the audience has such curiosity and passion for and connection to him, and I owe that to them. Thank you. Sophia, um, Sylvie has become a huge fan of and your portrayal, and I, I made a joke at the beginning, but I have to say really that McDonald's in Oklahoma was something. That was really something. For you, the second season takes your character, if you're the, uh, kind of a, a universe-destroying Loki variant in season one, there's a very different arc for you in season two. Give us a sense, what was that like for you when you guys came back, and, and how, did, how did Sylvie change for you? Well, Sylvie's in a completely different space in series two. Series one, she's super angry. She just wants to. She just wants revenge. She wants to. She wants to kill the man at the, at the end of time. And in the second series, she has to deal with her choice. Um, I think she's trying to find some stillness and some peace within herself, and trying to assimilate into like a normal human life, which is difficult yeah. because she's. An outcast. She's a weirdo. She's she's not normal, and she has a go, but she doesn't quite manage it. It all gets you know ripped away from her, and in the end, it's it's quite a tragedy for Sylvie, I think. Um, yeah, when that new life is put under threat, and she's she has to fight for it again, and yeah. I have a quick question for you guys. How many, how many of you have seen season two? Woo! Awesome. Spoilers. Okay. So, the universe gets to you. Have you? Oh, and... No spoilers! No spoilers! Really? This guy hasn't seen it yet. I'm busy, boss! Okay, no spoilers. So, um, you like some athletic wear, and you like doing things athletic. Uh, when we did Mobius in season one, the, the chemistry between the two of you was amazing, as the chemistry was with you with Sophia. And, and when you leave the end of season one, it really feels like, I felt like, how are they going to make this go more? 
And you guys did, you really did, with the, the, the way the timeline and the, the, the TPA, the, the files are with Mr. Minutes, all new characters, whatever. What was it like for you coming back? Because they so enlarged the range of the character this time around. Um, well, I was excited to come back, and um, I didn't think of it so much as they kind of widen the range, so, sort of. Um, you know, I guess we don't want to talk about spoilers, but um, <laughs> the show's been out for almost seven months. People have spoken, you can tell. Well, I think with, um, you know, in the sort of dynamic between, um, you know, between us, you know, certainly in the first season, the way I kind of probing and you know know everything about his life it's a little bit flipped in season two where um, Mobius has lost some of his certainty and um, and kind of um, you know is questioning a lot of things and what you were just saying about looking for some I like the way you put that some stillness and uh, peace um, I think uh, Mobius is trying to kind of figure out kind of, you know, what he might have been doing um, on the timeline uh, before. Um, but um, did that answer your question? <laughs> no spoilers. Very well done. Tom, yeah. well, obviously we talked about it at the beginning, that the history that you had with Loki and the history, and there's the famous stories that many people told me about you and the Loki quizzes. And the encyclopedic knowledge of Loki. Pop quizzes. Later. You just dreaded coming in and getting hit with a pop quiz. Yeah. <laughs> Ruler. No. I'm going to make an assumption that things have wrapped up. What is it like for you now at the end of that long run? This character who's been... I mean, you obviously you had the success with the Night Manager, which is coming back for another run. <laughs> and many, many others. But, you know, for a lot of people. Like, I remember being at Comic-Con several years ago when you came out, and that, like, man, that was like the Beatles in Hollywood. It was serious, right? That was an amazing, unrepeatable, and unforgettable experience. And you should YouTube it, trust me. Uh, but the, you know, playing Loki has changed the course of my whole life, um, no question. And I feel, if pride were permissible, I just feel so proud of, um, of where we've ended up in season two, it was very creatively fulfilling to bring something full circle. Um, he, I always saw him from the very first film, the first Thor movie, I saw him as a broken soul um, with a shattered heart who felt like he didn't belong. He didn't belong in his family, he was an orphan, he was adopted, he was on the margins, an outcast. And that's what binds him to Sylvie, they both are. And all that grief hardens into grievance, and the grievance is what drives him to become a villain in the Avengers, and then an uh, uneasy ally in the later Thor movies. And this chance that he's given by Mobius, the second chance, a second chance to rediscover that glorious purpose that he feels he has always been burdened with. Well, it's interesting because the final episode of season two is called Glorious. Right, I, I, but I, I think it's because finally he discovers that his purpose is to look after his friends and to give his life for people he loves, which perhaps was always his purpose, but it comes in a shape he would never have recognized and would never have anticipated. And um, I think it was, it, it gave a kind of catharsis. Exactly, yeah, yeah. He wasn't ready for it. It's no spoilers, but there's a there's a big family component to the end of this one. But I suppose to go from to go from that high status position to this humility, and to and to discover that humility through a process of awakening and growth and love and friendship, that, that feels very redeeming and um, and uh, honorific of of Loki as a character. Sophia, one of the things about Loki when the first season came in, and certainly in season two, is the look of Loki is so amazing and distinct. And, and you know, when we watch you guys in those environments, I wonder, how does that foster or um, uh, illuminate you as a performer to be in those environments that just create this 
I mean, just that we saw some clips from the final episode up here and stuff like that. I mean, they're visually stunning. Yeah, and a lot, uh, quite, um, our show is quite different to a lot of these big Marvel shows um, in the sense that we don't have that much green screen. Uh, it's all real. The sets are real, and we have ceilings on them, which is also quite rare. <laughs> they don't just stop. Like, they're, they're huge fields that, that are, they feel like real worlds. So the sets definitely help, you know, you to feel like you're in that place. And the TVA especially feels super claustrophobic because of all the corridors and it's all real. You're, you're really there. It was sometimes exciting when we were going to move on to a new scene and a new location, like what's the set going to look like? Yeah. Because when you could walk on, it was. It's like, wow. Well, well that's, that's the thing. I mean, I wonder, I mean, I think, I think that you told me this once about something we were talking about, like, you know, when you're on a good production design set, like, I don't mean to say, like, you know, you put on the outfit, it's not, but you're not working, but, like, you just kind of go there. Like, you open a drawer, and there's a TVA magazine in there, and there's all that, like, it, was that something you found, Owen? Like, it just, it put you in the place? Oh, yeah, for sure. And I'm just thinking of kind of my favorite sets, and um, I love, um, you know, where we're introduced to Key. Uh, I thought that set, um, you know, or Bor Boris uh, was one of the best. Okay, now we have to do the game. Sophia, what's your favorite set? Uh, the World's Fair. There's like an actual giraffe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like real animals and so many essays all like working their asses off and looking amazing and the costumes and oh, it was, it's just incredible. And you're on a Ferris wheel that moves. How? But was your second one the one where we meet Key? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's yours? What was your favorite? Mine was the um, the core control room where we must have spent a month. Um, yeah. we, <laughs> that one we, we got our fill. I mean, that that one, so it's hard to dial it back to the yeah. first time. Where yeah. It was amazing. It was amazing. I mean, it, it was. So there's, there's as you probably if you've seen it, there's many iterations. Loki runs that loop over and over and over again to see if he can get it right and get it perfect. And Kasra Parahani, our production designer, and the director of episode three of season two, just immaculate work. It was almost on three stories, and it was like it was like almost the captain's cabin of a ocean liner, but it was also an observation chamber. Um, and there was uh, there were real staircases down below for getting into the radiation suit, and then a, a I don't know maybe from the, here to the end of the theater, a length of a gangway where you're looking up at this extraordinary generator that runs the order of reality. Did that make it for you, and Sophia mentioned it, about not, not being as many green screens as you usually see in sort of Marvel and DC type studios stuff. Does that for you, does that, is it adrenaline? Like it sounds like it gets you more. It's incredibly exciting. I think what it does to all of us is it coordinates our imaginations. And you get, and, and you, you suddenly, all our imaginations are in sync because we're experiencing the same thing at the same time in the same place. And you get so much from the precision of the art direction. And you're in, it feels like you're in a real place. There was a moment when the, a wave of radiation was coming towards us through the, uh, from outside the observation window. And the shutters were down, and the um, uh, art department and the special effects department were able to make the shutters rattle in the most terrifying way. It was like being in an airplane and you think something awful is going to happen. And the sound of the rattling, do you remember it was, it was, it, you felt it. And um, yeah, I just pay tribute to everybody behind the scenes who made that, because it helps us be precise in the application of our imagination, for sure. I have to ask you, is there going to be more of you and Loki? I don't know. <laughs> I've learned never. Right. This <laughs> <Just laughs> Kevin Feige. Yeah. Yeah. It's about my pay grade. I think we, I know that we, something happened. We, season two, um, we started um, to understand we, there was an enthusiasm and a desire to do another season very early on when we were in, uh, making season one. And what was very satisfying was to then develop the story as a narrative in two volumes. We have, we're going to have 12 episodes to tell this story. 
and in the first episode of the first season, we were going to break Loki down, break his psyche open, create existential crisis and anxiety and doubt, give him a huge problem, and then take 12 episodes to find resolution. And, and across that time, he would meet Sylvie um, and, and, and have this relationship with Mobius where they, after sort of being analyzed, they sort of become an unlikely uh, friendship. Um, and that all of these characters would go on a journey together because the stakes would get so high. So I feel like it's been two volumes and anything beyond that, I really, I, I can't, wish I could tell you, but I have no idea. No, 